So Patrick Pentland of uh, Sloan. First of all, I just seen your show. Very crazy up there. It was a bit weird. It's not the, not the usual show because uh, our bass player, uh, Chris, broke his collarbone. He was hit by a drunk driver. And we assume a drunk driver because it took off. And we're going to get him and sue him for everything that we can get. Really? Uh, so he, his arm was in a path, I think. So we had uh, our keyboard player filled in on drums and bass, and then our, our friend who often sells merch for us and plays in bands, he came up and played some, some bass as well. So we covered this show. But Chris has to have surgery next week, so we, can, we have to blow out a bunch of shows while he recuperates. Pardon me, which is a, a drag because we tend to make most of our money in the summer right. doing these types of festivals, and uh, we can't do them, so. You know, we'll survive. You guys had a good sound up there, though. It was fun, yeah. I mean, the, the people that we had out, Kevin and Mike, uh, Kevin and Greg, um, they they can play. Like they, they're real players. So yeah. They rehearsed once. I wasn't there. I was here in Halifax, but they rehearsed with with the rest of the band one night, one evening, and then it was basically like, okay, you guys know what you're doing, so let's just go and play in front of all these people. And uh, Chris Murphy likes to kick around those mic stands, eh? I think. And did you see when the bassist? got hit in yeah, the back of the I head. Heard it. I didn't see it, but I heard about it, yeah. Yeah. I think he was trying to be a little, you know, we, we come from, uh, in Halifax here, uh, in the 80s, mid 80s, there's like a hardcore punk scene, and that's where we sort of got started, that's what we did, um, up until Sloan, basically. So, um, that, there was that type of activity going, you know, a lot more of a, a show, a rough, not a rougher show, but things yeah. falling and getting thrown around and stuff like that, so. Throwing tambourines up in the air. Yeah. Yeah, you know weird. all that good stuff. You get 18 years away from that, and it, it's odd to have to be throwing tambourines around. But um, but yeah. Um, Did you have any uh, mic stands land on your guitar? Yeah, ever break I'll, I'll guitars? Yeah, I think so. But um, no. Uh, um, but uh, usually he can't throw things around because he's playing bass. Yeah. So I think it basically was like 18 tonight years, was 18 years of frustration. He's just for like throwing today, stuff yeah. And the, here's the weird thing too is that the, the day that, that uh, the, the day that he got hit, like he got hit at, at late at night, but the day we had been recording, we recorded a hardcore song that he had written 22 years ago when he was in a band called Spent. Um, and we, we decided let's let's record this song. Like we're set up to record live off the floor. And so he had finished the vocals for this song, this hardcore punk song, and then he gets on his bike and goes to see some, you know, hang out and he gets hit by a car. Um, Maybe that was God saying, don't record any more hardcore songs. Yeah. Maybe that was just, just coincidence, I don't know. What are your main influences as a guitar player? As a guitar player, uh, the Young Brothers from ACDC, for sure. Yeah. Both of them. Um, SG Guitars. Yeah, like Angus and Malcolm. Um, like uh, Mick Ronson. Yeah. Bowie. The Randy Rose look alike, or Randy yeah, Rose look like Rose Mick, Mick Ronson, yeah. For sure. Yeah, you're yeah. great. And I love Randy Rhodes too, but I don't think a lot of Randy comes out in what I play. Although I love the double track guitar solos, and yeah. and I get a couple of little like I, I definitely love. I have a bunch of Ozzy bootlegs from around that, that, those two records and uh, live stuff that I really like. You know, I have guilty pleasures that I don't know if they influence me, but what I'm into is guitar. I mean, I love. But we actually worked with a lot of different cool guitar players, but. But yeah, I, for some reason, I've got this sucker thing for Zach Wilde. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, he's just this guy, and he gets the squeal going. Like, the oh, yeah. harmonic is amazing, you know? And although I saw Black Label last uh, spring, and and, um, and I actually was quite bored with the show. It wasn't that great a show. Kind of like, I, well, you know, I, li I actually like, like, I thought that he had some, some like, singles. Like, some, like yep, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which one I thought single. was great. Like, uh, and you know he's very, it's very Alice in Chains. Like he's obviously so influenced by Alice in Chains, um, both in terms of guitar playing, I guess. Although he's got his own style, but also the vocal style. It's a little, a little much at times, but um, but whatever. I also just like as what we try to do is like create this sort of. Uh, he's done it way better, but like create this vibe about the band. It's, like, it's a bike, bike gang. It's a club. Yeah. And that's, from a marketing point of view, that's a great oh, thing yeah, to do. Oh yeah, super because thing. I went to the merch table at that show, every hoodie or t-shirt was extra large, or extra, extra large, and they were going for like 60 bucks a month, or something crazy like that. Yeah. Because I, I was going to buy something, I was like, I can't afford anything on this table, it's crazy. And they were selling out of everything. And it's, you know, they just want the, the BLS, whatever, and yeah. like the...
but yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I, I like all that stuff because it's sort of like a club or something, and yeah. I mean, you know, uh, more than a band. With our, and you know, other people that I respect, like as a group, as a band, I think we were into. We're obviously influenced by like classic rock, but also like Chris and I for sure are into are into Rush because we we're right. Canadian. Uh, they had their own label in Canada. They, they've done things. We've tried, we haven't like consciously tried to do things like them, but they're sort of like you can look to them as an example of a band that can exist forever and do things on your own terms and still be successful. And that's sort of what we tried to do. Am I correct when I say you guys got Beach Boys background vocals? I, I, Beach, is it Bo Beach Boys or or um, Beatles or I guess more than yeah. We got about. About five or six years ago, we got into three-bar harmonies. Yeah. yeah. We wouldn't do it before because we thought we couldn't pull it off live. And then we just decided, who cares if we can pull it off live? Like, this is make a good... A record is a record, and playing live is playing live. Don't worry about it too much. Um, but yeah, I mean, all that stuff you got to learn from, you got to be into it. Um, but you can't discount the other side of what you do, which is or where you come from, punk rock side or hard rock side or whatever. Yeah. Just trying to meld all that stuff together and be happy with it. And, and because there's four songwriters, it's really hard to, uh, like we don't have a cohesive sound. And for years, we tried to have a cohesive sound. And about, certainly with our last, not this record, but the record before, Never Hear the End of It, we sort of embraced the fact that we're just four guys. We could make four solo records, but we don't want to because we like to yeah. play together. So we don't want to turn into Kiss. Yeah, because that was the worst idea ever. You know. You know the Although you know. Marketing point. Yeah. You know. But that was, people are always, always asking us to do four solo records. You guys, you guys should do four solo records. So when we started doing Never Hear the End of It, we were actually going to do four solo records. And then into it, we realized, aside from maybe two or three songs each, like we didn't really want to make records. We just wanted to, you know what I mean, like. So with, with Never Hear the End of It, it was just like, I'm going to produce my songs my way, and, and I'm going to do everything I want to do my way. And Chris can do that, and Jay can do that, and Andrew can do that, and nobody's going to get, nobody's going to say a word about it. You just go into the studio and do whatever you want. That's your solo song, or your solo three songs, or whatever. It ended up being a lot of songs, a lot of music. I think that cleared the cobwebs out a lot in terms of like stuff that was left over for years. When we came to do um, Parallel Play, I think we continued with that, and, but it's a smaller, it's a shorter record. I think that's what we're going to do from now on, it's just, I trust the other guys to make good music, it doesn't have to sound like my music, mm -hmm. and when we play live, it all kind of sounds the same anyway, so, yeah. yeah. What would be your best hit Sloan song to play live? Like, Coax Me, uh, I think the song you that, know, the that songs gets, you sing? Well, the song that gets the most response, and it's sort of the most built towards playing live is Money City Maniac. Yeah. Which is the one you have to do all the time. Um, and I like to play it. Um, it's very simple. It's my ACDC homage. Yeah. <laughs> but um, we do have a, a catalog of songs. That we, like we, every, almost every song we played to today was a single, except for a few. Yeah. And we could do a, a whole set like that. We did a, we did a, like a, uh, some would say a best of, but it was really just a, a singles compilation yeah. called A Sides Win. Yeah. And, um, and we toured that. We just basically played all the singles on that on that tour. And that's a whole set there. Of, of, it's like, you know, you go to see ACDC, they're not going to play, they might play two album tracks, and the rest yeah. are all going to be. Would you say that in Europe, Sloan is looked at as big as Canada? No, I don't know. No. What about United States of America? I mean, in America are not, they starting to pick up? It's not so bad. Like, we've been going to America since the beginning. Um, I would say we probably play more shows in America than Canada, yeah. but we will play to um, in the in the major cities. We play to a good load of people, but also in Canada, like you know, we play. If you play New York, we play the Bowery Ballroom. It's like 600 people. We do two nights there and it'll sell out. Yeah. In Boston, we can play um, Paradise, Paradise or something like that, or um, or in DC, we play 9:30 Club or something. But like. Um, we play those size venues in Canada too. We're not as big in Canada as people think we are. We can do festivals. Yeah. It's a weird one for us to play so early in the bill. Yeah. We usually play last, but of course there's, there's chicken fun. And, yeah. Um, the big chick chicken foot with Joe Satriani. Well, that was the thing. I started to do some solo. I haven't played guitar in a while, so I was just like digging around, and then it was like, why am I even doing this? Like Joe Satriani's here. Like why am I bothering? <laughs> so I just stopped. Yeah. Um, Europe is, a, is something that we would love to 
We toured Europe maybe four times in our career. Oh yeah? And even then it's been like 10 shows. Ever go to Japan? Yeah, three times. And Japan should be uh, very well Yeah, we do well. We, we haven't there. been back in a while though because I think we pissed off the promoters there. Really? Uh, somebody told me that. that um, we, we backed out of a tour. We were going to tour with Weezer okay. in Japan. And one of us got sick or something. Or I can't remember what happened. Or maybe Andrew had a baby or something. and So we couldn't make it. So we, we backed out of the tour. And apparently that insulted me. And so that's why we haven't been asked back. It's fucking mind-blowing to me. Yeah. But we'll see what happens in the future. Oh, the other thing, too, about all the touring is that in this period, the last six or so years, we've been having children. So touring has been... Uh, limited because we don't want to go away from our kids for too long. So we yeah. go to America, Canada, and then if we want to go to Japan or Spain or whatever, we do that quickly. We tour economically, time-wise, because of our ch children. But as they get older, we'll probably start to tour longer. You know, again, like we used to. Yeah. When was the last time you came to Halifax? The Rolling Stones show? Or, or? No, we played here about maybe six, four months ago. We played it yeah. at Dal. Oh, okay. And it was a. Uh, show we played at the Greywood which we thought was gonna be really small yeah. whatever but it was like a tight packed which we prefer to play like you know 400 people packed in is our favorite type of show to play having played for years I don't like I'd love to be able to play arenas in terms of making the money but in terms of the actual show it's not yeah. that much fun to play like it's kind of to finish fun. off your guitar amplification do yeah. you always use the same amps and uh, you know was, same that, effects that stuff was rented the amps were rented okay. i do play a mesa boogie dual rectifier and a jcm 900 and i have two uh 412 cabinets but they have they have different green they have green backs okay green and backs. The, the amps are different they have different tubes so i have a different sound that was that sound was driving me crazy oh yeah <laughs> same effects but it didn't work well together but i i can you know i i the pedals that I have are sort of selected based on the fact that they sound good pretty much through everything. And you know what I mean? So they're not necessarily, I'm sure I would like to have more exotic effects, but yeah. I don't do it because it might sound like crap through a rented amp. You know? Yeah, you never know. But I do, I use the Zach Wild yeah. Overdrive. You do use it's it? It's a great one. It's awesome. Really? So that's part of your show? Yeah, yeah. It's it's not. MXR uh, Zach MXR Wild. one, yeah. It's not very heavy. It's not very overdriven, but it's just got like a really nice sustain to it. It's really good. You must be a big Zach Wild fan then. Uh, well, you know what? It's about my third one because they keep but they, they suck. Talk. They really? Into, like construction, they're always breaking. But uh, could that be a marketing? Uh... It might be. <laughs> I'm sure his doesn't break all the time. No, <laughs> probably because he doesn't use it. <laughs> but uh, no, it's a good overdrive. It's not a it's not a, not a heavy overdrive. It's just got like a really great sustain to it. You know? Ever I'm, ever I'm, tried the Zach Wild Wah Wah? Yeah, yeah. I don't like the Zach Wah Wah that much, but I like the Dimebag one. The Dimebag yeah. one's really good. Yeah. Cool. I don't use that. The my Wah. It, it doesn't, uh, you don't click it to turn on, as yeah. soon as you touch it, it's on, and when you leave it off, and you take your foot it's off, like it's like the bad, uh, bad horsey Steve Vai. It's like what? The bad horsey Steve Vai. Oh, really? Click it on, on, off. Like, uh, you just move it. Yeah, it's, goes it's on just and a off. rocker thing, like, as soon as yeah. you touch it, it because, um, when I'm singing, I can't really concentrate on hitting something and turning it off. Right. So, I often go on it while I'm singing, so I, it's not the best wall, but it works well for me. If I were to get... I could probably get like a, a dime bag one and mod it so I could do that, but I'm too yeah. lazy. <laughs> well, Patrick, it was a pleasure. Yeah, well, thank you for and, uh, the interview. Great show, by the way. Well, thank you. How is Q4 doing you? Oh, they're, they've, you know what, since Chase Douglas got, got involved, they're treating, treating great. Yeah? Before that, not so great. Oh. Pleasure.